भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया Live from West Hills, California, in the beautiful San Fernando Valley, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily spiritual podcast with your host, Rakanath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastubadas. Welcome to the show. This is episode 1383. Good morning, everybody. Coming down off of a super high, the <laughs> L.A. Rafi Asha. I'm still buzzing from it, all of it. I am, too. I am, too. Incredible, incredible weekend. I'm I don't know why. Usually after a weekend like this, I'm a little, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm like, okay, I'm a little exhausted. A ornery like, maybe, a little grumpy. Grumpy, sometimes grumpy. Mm-hmm. I'm just really buzzing. We had just such a wonderful time. At the bo- We met so many others. If you're not unfamiliar with an other, it's a person that's not on Zoom. We get a handful between 50 and 100 plus people on Zoom every morning. But there's people who listen to the podcast like every day that you never know they're there. We call them the others so many people came up to me i'm an other i'm an other from edmonton i'm an other from you know florida i'm an other from it was so cool just a whole to uh, big group from um arizona tucson arizona all oh, great tucson, people. oh those those people are great i know them from the old days yeah they're super cool they're old school um oh, there's a lot of indians a lot of senior devotees also yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was just filled with gratitude for the people that set up these beautiful festivals. I remember going there when I was in Youth of Today on my last tour before I became a monk. And it, there's something about the dancing. There's something about the singing. There's something about the prashad. There's something about the energy within that Rathya. I was like, that. I could get into this. No, it was just like, this yeah, is what I, I want. Mm-hmm. I want joy in my life. Whatever these guys have, I want it. And it's th- those type of taste for bhakti that like hooks the heart and then you can't get free anymore. Then nothing in the material world is the same. Yeah. You know who was solid there yesterday? Manu. Got to give a shout out to Manu. Definitely. Jamuna Jelly. Jamuna one of our regular viewers. Jamuna Jelly. She's here right now. She's driving yeah. back up to North. She co- That feast was great. She cooked the whole feast with her crew. She was, I arrived on Wednesday. She was, the moment I arrived at the LA temple, she was just running around doing her stuff. She didn't stop. And she yeah. just kept going the whole time. And in the same Jamuna jelly, everything's cool mood. I'm just getting the stuff done. I'm friendly to everyone. But just, she but was just very like, level-headed. yeah, but just like doing tons, you know, like most people, if they're doing nearly that much, they get all frantic. And it's not like she, she's got nothing to do. She runs a cafe. She yeah. runs a jelly distribution empire. <laughs> <laughs> she makes gourmet jellies. She's got a She's restaurant. Vats of jelly brewing on the boiler. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and California. I'll tell you even a detail, the interesting detail, right? So she's yeah. doing all this stuff. Like, and every year she comes down and does it and brings a whole crew, runs a whole thing. And then during after you know like at, at the festival site she introduced me to a lady that she knows and i thought oh they must go way back or this the the nature of their relationship was at one ratiacha like years ago she just found that lady like standing on like some steps or something like watching the whole parade and she just went up and started talking to her and they became friends and now every year they don't have like it's not like they have each other's phone numbers that they just meet at that spot every year what? And hang out, and they're like really close friends, you know. <laughs> they got this special thing going. Wait, that on. wasn't Tracy, was it? Janet. Her name is Janet. Janet. Okay. And Janet said she's going to listen to the to the podcast now. So, hey, hey Janet, if you're out there, it was nice meeting you. And then we had but a wonderful- that's Jamuna Jelly, right? Just like this nice person comes up and says, "Let's meet every," you know. Yeah, and you meet next. You know who wasn't there? The Christians, the crazy. Uh, I think we won. I, I think they all became covered. devotees. <laughs> they all, yeah. became, <laughs> the Christians who used to boycott <laughs> with Westboro Baptist Church or whoever yes. they were. Yes. Yeah. Um, we had a fun kirtan in our Wisdom of the Sages tent. It turned, turned out into a 
dance oh, party. Talk about the highlight that that Indian lady, whoever you are out there, she had every move in the book. Like they were, she, she was just awesome. this Kirtan, me and Shuba, and Maya. It was Maya actually. Maya wasn't there for that one. Um, uh, but yeah, we had a crew in that tent singing. And then it just turned into a whole dance party. This Indian lady came in and just stole the show, spinning around. Then Jai Shri. And then, then everybody was just there. It was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful to witness. I think we need to learn all those moves that she had. It's I like, need to learn some dance moves. That's those, are, sure. those are I'm just really like good dorking moves. it up there on stage. I don't think they were difficult moves, but they were just, they were good ones, you know? A lot of, yeah. a lot of style she had. And then we have this. Fun, super fun kirtan on stage with Jonavi, myself, yeah. Maya, Katie Purcell, um, Sergey, Eileen. We were, it was it was so much fun. That's great. Oh, I could Ishan on Murdunga. You didn't see that? I so I, I popped in just for a moment um, to try to film it, and somehow I screwed up filming it. But good thing that Mira went back later and got it. Yeah, you can, can actually go to our Instagram uh, page. Okay. And see. Some uh, a lot of what we're talking about is up there. Yeah, although I had to leave to return because Stupa's phone to him at like the height of the kirtan with John. The height, oh. <laughs> you know, I did the question and a Q and A booth after that. I know it was packed. That that was an adventure, man. It was like awesome. It was like you know, it was it was for me. It was special because I remember back when you and I were kids, like knew with all this, and we used to watch the men that we really admire, like doing that kind of thing. You know, like just taking questions from the audience like that. And now somehow I was that guy doing it. So it was kind of, it, it was kind of, I don't know, special for me, but r really dynamic. It felt really dynamic, you know, people were it interested was, to hear. It was really special for me to be there too, many, many years later and with my children there and, you know, yeah, taking my kids to that parade. Anyway, we've got to do years. this every year. We, you know, I think let's now, do this every year. I'm and and, so and the whole retreat, the retreat before that was great too. So, yeah. Well, you know, I danced. Uh, practice. I danced like three quarters that were at the outro. I, I, I was in bliss. You know? Oh, Kostuba! If you saw Kostuba yesterday, he was right in front of Lady Lord Juggernaut's cart, yeah. just dancing. I was like, "Yep, now we're the old guys dancing in the middle. That's us now." <laughs> Kostuba <laughs> was like in full bliss. I dancing. got tired about three quarters away after about an hour and a half. I felt like one of those. You know how they used to have those dance contests where you like you go all night and like you try to stay awake. I kind of felt like that. Kind of felt like I'm wearing out. I'm wearing down. But it was it was wonderful. It was beautiful. Great day. Um, if, uh, any Youth of Today fans out there? Uh, Sammy was there because Sammy lives yeah. in Venice. He came with his daughter. It was so funny because Krishna has been following Sammy for decades now, and so my old friend Sammy, who's not a devotee, but he sort of likes devotees. Um, he and his daughter came and they were in the parade the whole time. And then all of a sudden I was supposed to go on stage and do a kirtan to welcome Lord Jagannath from the carts. But very quickly, Maduha, who's this big sort of Marlboro man of like Marlboro. the Hare Krishna movement. He's like big rugged. He, he, he puts up the whole festival. He has a truck that you put the, all of these displays in and everything. He travels around the whole country all summer, putting on the same festival in, across North America. So me, Sammy, and his daughter were just like sort of standing there, like waiting for me to get on stage. And Maduha Prabhu comes over and he goes, you guys, help me move this tent. Lord Jagannath's coming off the cart. And so me and his daughter and him, four of us, get up a leg of this tent. We're lifting this tent for Lord Jagannath. And I was thinking in my head, this is amazing. Lord Jagannath is engaging Sammy in his service right now. Yeah. How merciful <laughs> the Lord is. And all of a sudden, like, okay, and then the cart, you know those carts, there you can't control them. It starts coming towards us. We're like, move back, move back to the tent for Lord Jagannath and move forward. And we caught in this thing. But I had to get on stage. My phone was ringing and Mono was saying, you got to get on stage. You got to get on stage. So I was like, Maduha, I got to leave. And so he just grabs Sam and he goes, come with me. We got to go on the cart. So Sammy is climbing up. I the saw that photo of him up on the cart. He's got his <laughs> I see him taking off his shoes. I've never been him. up on one of those carts. I've never been, <laughs> on, been on the cart. And Sammy's up there. And one of the Pujaris looks at him and goes, what are you doing here? And he goes, I'm helping Lord Jack enough. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what okay, all right. <laughs> I'm helping Lord Juggernaut. I'm helping Lord Ju <laughs> and he was holding the, he was holding the canopy for Lord Juggernaut. <laughs> That's great. Krishna is so engaging.
to everybody. I mean, you know, there are piranhas written about like what he just did, like the benefit that he'll get from that, like the, the ridiculous amounts of even understand yeah. the benefit, like bathing in all the holy rivers, doing this, doing that, like he just did it. Five fire, young, yeah, yeah, no. yeah lifetime made a sacrifice. Yeah, right. yeah, that's so cool. <sighs> all right, man. So that was nice. And anyway, and now I, you know, I, I'm, I went to visit some cl- my old when I was a yoga teacher in L.A. I had some wonderful clients, super nice Persian family, and they came to the temple the other day, and they invited me to come over. So me and Mayor came here for, came here overnight, and we just had that incredible Persian feast. It's just so good to see people you've cultivated a connection with as a yoga teacher, and um, yeah, and then we're going to drive down to Southern California, stop off in Laguna, have lunch with Tukaram and Radhika, and then uh, go back to Makunika Shores in San Diego. Perfect. Yeah, it's great. I, I'm I'm jump I'm off to the airport as soon as this show is done. Mm. Run right oh wow! Door. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so we get into we got the show tomorrow, right? Or yeah, no? but at not at the same time, nine a.m. Eastern. Well, Mara, who wanted to hand that mic over to Mara? How how was your weekend, Mara? It was great. Thanks. <laughs> it was so great to meet so many people. We celebrated your birthday. Yeah, the birthday yeah. celebration was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right, so our show is at this time, 9 a.m. Eastern time through Thursday this week. And then Friday, we'll go back to 7 a.m. Okay, Um, that'll make the transition a little easier for us. Yeah, exactly. Um, Also, we have a Back to Your Cover Group meeting today at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And it's Wear Your Merch Monday. So wear your Wisdom of the Sages t-shirt or sweatshirt, take a picture and share it on social media and tag us on Facebook and Instagram and we'll share the post too. Okay. All right. You ready, Ryan? <clears throat> I'm ready. Ryan and the Muskitian, the Ramchaivan, Rotamam, Devim, Saraswatim, Vyasam, Tatu, Jayam, Mudiraya. Before reciting a Shima Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badrishu Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Tamashloki Bhakti Rabhavati Naishtiki by regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated, and loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Agyana Timarandasya Jana Jana Jalakaya Chaksurun Midam Dena Tasmay Shri Gurabeda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 13, Text 44. You know, I got to give a shout out to Veda Yoga also. <laughs> okay. I forgot. I mean, there was a whole day we forgot about. They were we great. All day at Veda Yoga. And um, Kumi and her crew there. She's got like her people. So good. You can tell so they're her good. people. And, def- and definitely Kumi's empowered. Yeah, and a great. I didn't even see her at the Arathi Ashram. They had a whole yoga tent. I, did you see that? I, I stayed at our tent the whole time, and then we got on the main stage and back to our tent, back to the main stage. Yeah, it, that's all I did. Yeah. Anyway, it's shout true. out to to Veda Yoga if you're in the Southern California area. You want a good yoga studio? You check them out. There's two locations now. You know okay, I have, to, I have to give a shout out to who? I'm forgetting his name now, though. But the the devotee that that always dances. And spinning around, uh, uh, Krishna Bhakta, no Krishna Avatar, Krishna Avatar, is Krishna Krishna Avatar, Avatar. Krishna Avatar, his sons Vrindavan, the great yeah, leader, yeah, yeah. Krishna, yeah Avatar. Krishna Avatar. He's he stage dives in a shelter video in the in the shelter for the shelter song. Bhakta Avatar, Bhakta, Bhakta Avatar. Avatar. Yeah. You gotta you gotta you gotta go to shelter uh, shelter. The song was Shelter <laughs> by, the, by the band Shelter okay. and. We're playing in New York City, and you just see this devotee get up on stage and stage dive. He's so great. He's like, he's kind of an Abba dude in the sense that, like, he's, he's a an transcendental old man. man, man. He's, a he's kind of hunched man, man. over, you know. He's not, he's, you know, like he kind of walks around like a little bent over, you know. Yeah, he's bent. He's, but, he's bent. But he's got the sweetest heart. And in any kirtan, he's dancing and spinning around like crazy. And so, right when the Rathya just started rolling, I just started dancing with abandon a bit. Yeah. And he just, and then he just showed up and we just, we just fell into each other's arms. 
<laughs> and He's so, a special soul. And I said, I felt blessed. I really did. I said, the fact that this person has just shown up and, and embraced me, we're just going to dance the whole way, you know. And uh, and I just felt ecstasy dancing around with him. He's one of those guys, like, if you get into the Krishna consciousness circles, you're like, is this guy crazy or is he actually not of this world. That's right. He's, like he's the one that's not crazy. <laughs> yeah. He's the one that's not crazy. It's like yeah. as soon as a kirtan starts, everyone can be sitting down. He'll be standing up and just spinning around and spinning around and spinning around. And so yeah. if you're not familiar with kirtan, you'd be like, what's this guy doing? Is he but on drugs? Familiar with, is he <laughs> on drugs? Is he? Yeah. <laughs> but but actually, he's just always in a type of spiritual ecstasy. And I've never seen him not happy and excited and sweet, oh, sweet. and humble. He came up and you know? hugged me twice yesterday. Yeah, great soul. Fucked Avatar. All right. Yeah, you're nothing but appreciation yesterday. I feel so <laughs> yeah. good about it. So right, let's text. let's let's just dip back just for a second into the previous one. Uh, which was text 43. Okay. So this verse, so we're hearing from this, another Avadut, uh, this person that's just lying on the ground, but he's got all these deep realizations about life and he's kind of getting interviewed by uh, Prahlad Maharaj. What are you all about? And what kind of spiritual thing do you have going on here? Right. You know, and, and he, we were talking last week that his, he, he kind of learned from the Python that like, I don't endeavor too much for external material things. The python, it doesn't go out and hunt. It doesn't eat every day. It'll lie in one spot and it right. kind of accepts what it gets. And so that principle of accepting what we get in life um, is, is a lot of the message of what he's sharing. And he's saying, in order to do that, you gotta, you gotta kind of transcend something that's like the most common thing in the world. And that is that we tend to judge this is good this is bad i need to get the good i need to avoid the bad and, and and this is how we live life pursuing what our mind has been programmed to accept as good trying to avoid what our mind is programmed is bad uh our life becomes an endeavor you know bouncing between those he said i don't even i kind of and, and he said he said this he said the mental concoction of discrimination between good and bad Again, we're not talking about good and bad behavior, you know, like good and evil, or, you know, we're not talking morals here. We're just saying like, that body is attractive, that one isn't, you know, that, 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 that's the job that I need, that one is, you know, just like, or that person, they said something about me, they're bad, this person said something about me, they're good. I don't see bad and good anymore. And so he says, the mental concoction of discrimination between good and bad should be accepted as one unit that it's just a type of illusory discrimination. I just put it all in one bag, right? Mm. And then it should be invested in the mind, the manas, which should then be invested in the false ego. So the programming in our mind is on these two levels. One, my mind is programmed to think this will please me and this won't. And two, my mind has been programmed to say, this is who I am. I'm a man, I'm American, I'm this, I'm that, or based on the body. So he's saying you take both of these, your, your good and bad discrimination, you put it in one bag, then you, you, you invest that in the ego, and then you take the false ego should be invested in the total material energy. So you're just saying, all of that stuff is not me. I have nothing to do with all of this thinking good and bad. I, I want this, I, I don't want that. This is pleasant, this is unpleasant. You know, there's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Um, what is it? Each advesha samutena vanda mohena bartha. That everyone is running around this world is bewildered by dualities arisen from, you could say, attraction and repulsion. You know, yeah. each it says advesha. desire or hate, but I think attraction and repulsion is. Yeah. A, I, I like those words. I really want this. I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. So, so you know, that's, that's the confused state. A, a more, a more, someone seeing deeper like this python man he's saying all of that it has nothing to do with who i am and so he gives up the he says th this is the process of fighting false discrimination so now from that point he can be introspective he can think about life he can think about the self and and then now we hear uh today's verses we're almost some of the chapters just uh three more verses left you know very often go stupid when we hear about religion it is praying for stuff that will make my life easier yeah praying for the pain to go away praying for healing, 
praying for abundance, praying for a good, a good life. It's never sort of only in Bhakti you hear, oh, let the calamities come again and again. <laughs> it's like, what? No, this isn't religion. Religion prays for the good, avoid the bad. But in Bhakti, you hear these things. The, the bad is actually oftentimes the good. Better than the good. <laughs> like Queen Kunti's praying for the bad. We're yeah. all trying to avoid the bad. In Bhakti, it's like there is no good or bad, or don't you understand? The bad can be the launching pad for self-realization. Something and that's beyond transcendent to, to the good and bad of the material realm. And it's times where things are really heading south in our life, these cold seasons of life. And some of us may be experiencing it right now. When you're in one of these darkest seasons of life, you should understand this is a special gift that you have to springboard off the bottom to go higher. It's rapid acceleration. There is no bad karma for the Krishna Bhakta. There's no bad karma. All it is is an acceleration of your pure devotional service. Just mm. think of it like that. Whenever you go down hard, you should think Krishna is giving me special mercy. Like when you hit the button, you, you go surfing, you get spun around in the waves. You don't know what, sometimes you get propelled to the bottom. It's when you hit that bottom, you can spring off the bottom. Use that mm. down, huh? Little California analogy Little California here. California analogy, <laughs> yeah, right? thing going on. Well, yeah, whenever you hit the bottom, you should know. Now I know where the bottom is. I'm not going lower. I'm only going up. Use those winter seasons to propel yourself, to trampoline yourself forward. That's where the growth is. Hmm. Thank you, Rana. Yeah. Okay, text 44. Text 44, text 44, text 44, text 44, text 44, text 44. How did that happen? How did we get that? <laughs> oh, a learned, thoughtful person must realize that material existence is an illusion. Interesting. I can... Okay. This is possible only by self-realization. A self-realized person... A self-realized person who has actually seen the truth should retire from all material activities. Being situated in self-realization. That doesn't mean you just give up everything that you're doing. Yeah, this guy did. This guy did. This guy did. You could. You could. You could. You could. You could become a Python person. You could become a Python person. But it means you have to do everything now in the consciousness of bhakti. Hmm. It's, it, it, I want to just go back to this first line. A, a thoughtful person must realize his material existence is an illusion. I don't know about the rest of the world because I can't enter into their heads, but my dreams at night, Kostuba, yes. they are so realistic. They're the, more real than when you wake up. They're more, it's like it was so real. Like I had, I woke from a dream this morning where, you know, I don't know if you know, but we have chickens at our farm. My daughter just got some chickens because she Sometimes likes chickens. in the home. And some, yeah, some, one came in the house the other day. But um, I was dreamt I was with the chickens yesterday. And some head farmer came up to me and was taking one of the chickens. And I was like, what are you doing with my chickens? And he goes, if it doesn't lay, it doesn't stay. Whoa. And I woke up. And I woke up. And I've never heard that crazy expression before. <laughs> but it, it doesn't lay. <laughs> <laughs> so he, I've got like in my dreams, I've got mi people making up aphorisms that like <laughs> they, they, they have like a swagger to themselves and a, a unique personality and facial features. It's so real. And then I wake up and I'm in this world. And truthfully, now that I'm in this house where I'm staying with these with these uh, clients of mine, I was thinking, yeah, I was here. And the guy just looked at me and he goes, yeah, you were here 20, you know, 20 years ago. That's when you were here. I was like. That's right. I was here 20 years ago. It seems like a moment ago. Our life is in like series of chapters. And as you're standing in the final chapters of life, you start to look back and it's like, it seems like a moment. I was here a moment ago. And it really, seems, as you get older, it just seems even more like a moment ago. Whew. Yeah, it's an illusion, man. Right. You want to read some of this commentary? Yes, I do. Text 44 commentary. By Srila Prabhupada. By analytical study, 
of the entire constitution of the body. One can surely come to the conclusion that the soul is different from all the body's material constituents, such as earth and water, fire and air. Okay. Right. That's what our body's made of. If people, if people argue, and I argued this once with a devotee, I was like, well, you're saying there's fire in my body. And he said, yeah, I was like, where is there fire? The body has heat. That's a type of fire, right? The Where do you think? That, how does how's your body warm? How's your body warm? So it's not like a campfire. It's not like a Boy Scout <laughs> campfire. I'm like two little Boy Scouts in my tummy, right? But there's a heat in the fire. That's what it means. Right? It's a radiant, radiant energy, the scientists would call it. Mm -hmm. Thus, the difference between the body and the soul can be realized by a person who's a little bit thoughtful. Manisi or Muni. After this realization of the individual spirit soul, one can very easily understand the supreme spirit soul. If one thus realizes that the individual soul is subordinate to the supreme uh, supreme spirit soul, he achieves self-realization. Okay, so this is this simple progression. Prabhupada just kind of taking us by the hand, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the verse said that, okay, this material existence is an illusion, we're kind of confused. We're kind of trapped in it, you know. Yeah. Um, a person has to realize this, and this is possible only by self-realization. So that means I need to realize who I am, what I am. I'm, I'm not. And so, probably say it begins with understanding that you're not your body, right? And if you can realize that you're not your body, then you realize, okay, there's the body, and then there's me, the soul. And if you can realize that, you're just a little step away from realizing that there's another soul, you know, mm -hmm. that, that that's kind of behind everything. There's another, you know, if within my body there's a soul, well, within this universe there's a soul that makes it all mm -hmm. come alive. If I'm if I'm the the spark of spirit that makes this body come alive, then there must be a spark of spirit that makes the universe come alive, and that. If you can just understand that you have, he, he uses a word that, you know, we don't like, you know, what trigger is a trigger to the West mind, subordinate, subordinate. What does the word ordinate mean? Remember on that? Subordinate. It'd be interesting to find out, you know, I think when we hear that it has an immediate negative con connotation in our minds. Why should I submit to anyone? But subordinate. If we can just, if you got it, Mary? Well. Uh. It maybe isn't the definition you're looking for. The okay. Cartesian coordinate obtained by measuring parallel to the y-axis. That was I, so. It just means you're <laughs> no. So that so that means we're just like located. Okay. Yeah. It's a, lower. I guess sub would sub mean lower, right? Coordinate. Yeah. Located low, like on a on a ladder, you know, of our universal influence, we're on a lower peg, <laughs> you know. And, and yeah, and and so, but you know, of course, there's more implication that the, the laws are kind of established by the what would be the opposite of subordinate. The what would mean higher as opposed to sub would be the opposite. Subordinate prefix, prefix, like higher ordinate. <laughs> you know, but, but, <laughs> I can't think this morning. <laughs> Superordinate. <laughs> Any case, so yes, yeah, you know the the higher, you know the, the the being with the higher status is kind of providing, you know, and including providing, you know, the laws, you know, the programming of the universe that we're moving through. You got superordinate. That's super the word. Ordinate. There you go. Super soul. It's a super soul. It's super soul. Situated super. Uh, on a higher level, as opposed to sub. Yeah. But continue you know, with the purport, or you want to? Uh, well, I, I was just thinking that you know, if someone asked me a question in that Q and A thing yesterday. Yeah. Do they stump you? Well, I mean, you know, like when you're on that beach, you know, there's always like these Venice beach, like there's always some, you know, crazy characters there, you know? Oh, there's some They're real crazy in and They all just want to, oh, theological, philosophical discussion. They just want to get right in there and get in on it. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Venice they, beach. They live under the boardwalk. They kind of crawl out from under there and they want to set up a know. table of art. <laughs> and so, uh, the, you know, I was talking about this then. So one guy just threw out like, well, what about the pygmies? Um, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know very much about pygmies, but uh, what about the pygmies? <laughs> it was just coming out of left field. Yeah. He was at the he was at the Q and A table. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a big crowd. There's a few people like that, you know, that are just kind of like taking. What about it in. the pygmies? <laughs> what does this have to do with the pygmies? That's yeah. right. It was, you know, the art is to like honor them without getting sidetracked. 
Yeah. Yes. Sure. Honor you know what? I oh, really don't I know. Honor the pygmies. It's no, no. Honor the person, so that you okay. don't like. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you can't do it like that. You know, like what are you talking about? Chopping that out of nowhere. But um, any case, so, no. What someone asked was, um, what is the consequence if you don't believe in reincarnation? Right. Mm. Like, what does it lead to? And so we just kind of went through it. Or, or what does it lead to if you do believe in reincarnation? And as we just started talking about it all, you know, kind of together, we, we just kind of saw that, like, just the idea that I'm not my body, that, that, that this body is made out of matter and I'm made out of something different, all that that opens you up to, it, it, it just opens up everything, you know, on, the, on a spiritual level, even on the practical level of how we coexist with one another, you know, it is is so much facilitated by that simple realization. Because if I'm not my body, then it means all that I'm identifying with, and, and we could go, you know, like for you and I, like male, American, et cetera, we realize that none of those things are true, that that's not actually who I am. Now, how does that affect how I relate to other people? Well, it means they're not the categories, these temporary material categories either. Yeah. We're all something beyond these temporary material categories that divide us. And the interesting thing is who do we, what do we meditate on the most? Cause everything in this world is a meditation. Generally we meditate on things or people that we hate. Well, there's a the desire and the hate. hate <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Desire, the right. we want, desire and, and hate. Yeah. We just mentioned early. So if I hate a Republican or if I hate a Democrat, because I'm one of the, the other side, Whatever you're meditating on, or you hate blacks, or you hate whites, right? You become that. That's your meditation. You're meditating on them all the time. You're thinking of them all the time. Even comes to us thinking of Krishna all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he got yeah. a spiritual body. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, it's only when that. That's why he was saying. What was that in that previous verse? He's saying you take it all, you put it in one bag, and you offer it into the material energy. Right, like all my false conceptions about who I am, all of my false conceptions about what I need, I just put it in one bag and I and I say that, and I and I throw it like into the fire of the material energy. I say that's not me. Mm. And from that point on, if you can if you can achieve that, then you're seeing everyone, you're seeing yourself, and you're seeing everyone on the platform of equality, the platform of eternity. You're 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 letting go of your fear. You're letting go of your anxiety. Uh, how can how can we exist peacefully w with one another, not be at war with one another, um, if we are not convinced that we're all um, transcendent and we're and we're not these categories? You know, here here's some homework. Okay. When you see somebody on them in the media that you're like, I hate these people, meditate okay. that meditate on them as pure spirit souls. Yeah. Get rid of all your hate for them. Then when you see someone like, oh, she's really sexy or he's really good looking or I'd like to be with him or her, see them as a pure spirit soul, not as their body, not as their, you know, what you're attracted to in them. See them, they're a pure spirit soul. They're going to get old. That body, whatever you're attracted to is going to get old and grotesque, but there's something more than that. Yeah. Guess what your Q&A guy was meditating on? Pygmies. Pygmies. <laughs> right? Yeah. He was just thinking about pygmies maybe all day, all day. And then all of a sudden it's a Q&A booth. What about the pygmies? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, man. What about the pygmies? That's my mantra today. And, you know, and you know I just... For this, I just, I, I, I just, we're talking about gratitude today. I'm just yeah. so grateful to Srila Prabhupada that he came and he was bringing bhakti to the Western world, right? Mm -hmm. That was his mission. He was so brilliant how he did it because there's this incredibly beautiful esoteric theology to it. But he didn't, that wasn't the, he didn't start there. He said, no, 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 we need to go back to the fundamental teachings that, right, that we're not these bodies that mm. we are sparks of eternal spiritual energy, that we're moving through a world made of material energy, that we become confused about what we need and what we want because we're identifying with matter. He started there, and that's actually the platform 
where you can pull all these different religions and spiritual tradi traditions together, um, united on that platform, mm. you know, you just united on that platform. It's, it's really provides, you know, it really, in his seven purposes of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, right? Maybe I can pull that up. But the very first one, he says, is to systematically, I think it's to systematically train. Maybe Mary can pull that up. She's, is she there? Did she disappear? Where did Mary go? I'll She's pull it up. well today. Seven purposes of ISKCON. There we go. Oh, look at her. She's on it. She, She's quick. I got it. To systematically propagate spiritual knowledge, right? This is what we're talking about. We're not the body. We're a spark of spiritual energy. Analyze it. Break it down. Cool. What we're doing today. Yeah. To, to systematically propagate spiritual knowledge to society at large and to educate people in the techniques of spiritual life mm -hmm. in order to check the imbalance of values in life and achieve real unity and peace in the world. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, you know, it exists on the basis of that understanding. It's, mm -hmm. it's such a powerful uh, force, just understanding that simple idea, the body is just a vehicle on the soul. Yeah. What about the pygmies? They've got the same thing. You, you and I have been pygmies, Argonaut. <laughs> and we may be in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's a fact. That's what about the pygmies. <laughs> what about the pygmies? What about the pygmies? There's nothing in these... Uh... That's what I should have said. I said, you've been a pygmy and me too. And that's what I should have said. We're all pygmies. You want to know about We're the pygmies? pygmies? Yeah. Okay. You want to continue? If one thus realizes... Oh, One thus realizes that the individual, the individual soul is subordinate to the supreme soul. He achieves self-realization. As explained in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, there are two souls within the body. The body is called a shetra. And there are two shetra gyas, or knowers of the shetras, right? Mm -hmm. Or occupants of the body. Namely, the haram atma, the super soul, and the individual soul. The super soul and the individual soul are like two birds sitting on the same tree. The tree is the material body. One bird, the individual soul, forgetful. He's a forgetful, forgetful bird. bird. <laughs> the forgetful bird. That's another mantra today. Don't be a forgetful bird. One bird, the individual soul, is a forgetful bird. He is eating the fruit of the tree, not caring for the instructions of the other bird, which is only a witness to the activities of the first bird. Who is his friend? Okay, let's let's just say. So it's saying that we're like the bird that's trying to taste the. We're fruit the silly old world. bird in the tree, just Forgetful eating bird. the fruit. And then Sometimes there's a really it, smart bird next to us trying to tell us stuff, and we're just some, not listening. We're not interested. Some, sometimes the fruit is sweet. Sometimes the fruit is bitter, right? Mm. And, and we're eating the fruit and going through our ups and downs in life. Meanwhile, the par mama is right there in the same heart with us, waiting. You know, for us it, it's a friend, just mm. patiently waiting for us to turn back. When the forgetful bird, when the forgetful bird comes to understand the supreme friend who is always with with him and trying to give him guidance in different bodies, he takes shelter at the lotus feet of the supreme bird, the big bird, big bird. <laughs> <laughs> As explained in the yoga process, Dhyan Vashista Tad Gatena. Manasa, Pasyanti Yam Yogina. When one actually becomes a perfect yogi by meditation, he can see the Supreme Friend and surrender unto him. This is the beginning of bhakti yoga or actual life in Krishna consciousness. Okay. Woo. I'm tired. Okay. Text 45. Text 45. We got two more texts. Okay, this is the. Prince, the king, Prahlad, no longer a little boy. Now he's walking around. The Prahlad, um, oh, this is uh, the, the, the so man Pajan. talking to Prahlad, the king. You are certainly a self-realized soul and a devotee of the Supreme Lord. You do not care for public opinion or so-called scriptures. For this reason, I have described to you without hesitation the history of my self-realization. Yeah. So he's saying you're seeing clear, right? And he, he mentions two things. You don't care for public opinion. Well, that's a big one because a lot of the <laughs> yeah. times the things that we do in this world are yeah. to appease other people. 
Sometimes we even go to the university, not because we want to, but because we feel like we should. And we, you know, I think my parents are going to be disappointed or if I don't get this job, I really would like to do this, but my parents told me not to do this. And oftentimes we are so attached to the public opinions of others in how we dress and how we present ourselves in our career, in, in our choice of a partner that we never check in with us mm -hmm. like like check in with like what do i actually want to do in this world what am i actually here for isn't there something more to life than what is you know put out set out before me you, you know whenever we hear like the stories that we have whether they're fictional or or like real life stories of heroes of heroism yeah you know it's, it's very common that there'll be an element where that person has to strike out on their own against the opinions of others, right? Like have the courage to step up and do something they have where to get everyone's, fired. everyone's looking at them saying, what the hell are you doing? Or they have to get laid off. There has to be a million failures before they yeah. move forward. Yeah. And, and, and um, it may not be that we all will be like heroes in the sense that like we'll be famous, hmm. but even in small ways, there's ways that we can act heroically in our own life. You know, where, in other words, where rather than cave mm. to and, and therefore remaining limited because being limited by the opinions of others, right? Oh, they're going to think I'm crazy if I do this. They're going to think I'm weird if I do that. And then we limit our life down and we never take a few heroic or courageous steps in life that make all the difference. You know, we, we were talking the other day uh, when we we're at uh, Veda Yoga saying, you know, for some people, it's quite natural, you know, especially if you're doing like in your hometown or something, to go out in the street sure. and, and do kirtan. People are going to see me and think, <laughs> I lost it, you know. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, but I think for both you and I, you know, there's a certain point in your life where it's just like, there's not one person in the world that could walk down the street and see me doing this where I'm going to have a problem with it, you know. Yeah. And, and, and that's, it's, then you're actually free. <laughs> and, and, so, and sometimes you look at people, even like as a kid, you look back in your own life and you see where you weren't able to do that and other people were, you know, and it's like, whoa, that person was kind of evolved, you know, that they were able to, uh, to just in one sense, be themselves or do what they think is, is right or progressive, you know, yeah. without caring about public opinion. So it is a big deal. Sure. You know, when we get into this, especially you and me back then, it, I tell you, it's a real Harry Krishna 2.0 now. It's it's such a whole different movement than the movement you and I joined. Yeah. But when we got into Bhakti, immediately, if you were a boy, you'd put on an Indian robe. Yeah. So I remember walking down Spring Street in New York, turning the corner and bumping right into Vinny Stigma. <laughs> and he looked at me. He's like, you know, if well, you're, hard, say who Vinny Stigma if you're is. hardcore, you know who this is. He's a celebrity hardcore guy. And he goes, oh, What's a good Italian guy like you wearing this outfit for? What's your mother going to think? <laughs> He's kind of like meeting um, a combination of Arthur Fonzarelli and uh, <laughs> um, someone even more like full on, you know. He's like right out of like a, one of the a mob movie or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the Sopranos meets, yeah. Or, with, uh, with, the, a, the with, a, with a mohawk or something like well, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, so we, you have to go through this phase like, yeah, you really want you really are aloof to public opinion. Walk around town to Doty in the neighborhood. You're friends with everybody. And it's like, oh, it's like one after another, one after another. Yeah. So so he's saying he prolog, even he's kind of so much in the public eye. This person is saying you're self you're certainly self-realized soul and a devoted to the Supreme Lord. You do not care for public opinion or so-called scriptures. And by so-called scriptures, I think he means it, it can be it can mean just other kind of literature that people take seriously, right? Other messages, the messages right. that are being the, the messages that are being propagated in, in whatever form. Well, I think a lot of scriptures or, you know, in this culture, you'd have like a self-help book. Yeah, you things know, like that. If, yeah. if they're good things, but they don't pertain to bhakti, you're not getting the whole you're not getting the whole picture. It's like me handing you a carburetor and saying, here, here you go. Run with this. A carburetor? 
Yeah, you got to see we try in Bhakti in the Srimad Bhagavatam. You're taking all facets of life and putting it in context. Mm. You're putting success in context. You're putting failure in context, and then you can see a much a, a broader idea of what the actual engine does. You know, so yeah, so when you uh, zoom out and see the Bhagavatam as this is where all this stuff is going. All these Vedic teachings, whether it's Ayurveda or dance or, you know, philosophy or Sanskrit or all these Vedic arts, they're all meant to bring us to one particular place, and that's to deep spiritual love and connection. Mm. And then he says this, right? He says, okay, so you're not confused by so-called scriptures. In other words, you're not confused by all these different messages society is putting out there is important to... That we should, you know, and, and you're also not concerned about public opinion. So therefore, you haven't limited yourself. You're not going to respond to the things that I share with you with these kind of hackneyed, road kind of automatic, shallow responses. And so he says, for this reason, I've described to you without hesitation the history of my self-realization. So he's a person that's kind of keeping to himself. He's not sharing. Most people don't even get. It's not like he's wearing some kind of spiritual outfit or posing in any way as a spiritual person or what, he's not even speaking to other people for the most part he's just kind of lying there and, and most people are looking at him without a clue of who he is and he has no intention of sharing it mm. unless a person if a person's coming and he, and he really gets the idea this person can understand he saw in in Prahlad, this person he's so sincere that he's he'll be receptive to what I have to share. So therefore, I'll share it. Normally, I don't even get involved with other people. They kind of waste my time, break 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 my you know, uh, get me out of my groove that I'm in. You know, and but okay, but you're you have the ability to understand this because it's just a huge clue. It's a clue about the guru disciple relationship, and it's a clue about receiving transcendental knowledge you know like what makes us receptive to the knowledge is out there we can anyone can pick up a Bhagavad Gita and read it but whose life is it going to change well one way that's going to open us up to it is when we get that courage in life that that sincerity that urgency in our life where I want the truth mm. and even if people think I'm weird mm. that doesn't matter to me you know, I'm, I'm at that point, right? Even if people think I'm like some kind of freak or whatever, I, I don't care for the public opinion and, and, and the public messages that are out there about what is necessarily good or bad. I really want to, okay, now you're receptive. Now, now you can receive this, this message that for mm. other people wouldn't penetrate. One last verse. One last verse, ready? Yeah. What? Nothing. Take me Nardamuni as, continued. Move on, move on. <laughs> Nothing. Nardamuni continued. After Prahlad Maharaj, after Prahlad Maharaj, the king of the demons, heard these instructions from the saint, he understood the occupational duties of the perfect person, the Paramahamsa. Thus, he duly worshipped the saint and took his permission and then left for his home. Look That's at that. You, you, you take your permission. You say, uh, I'm going to leave now. Do I have your blessings to leave? Thank you. You know, it's very it's sweet culture. You know, I was feeling that all left and right yesterday. You know, you were feeling it until one moment when some guy goes, yeah, what about the pygmies? <laughs> he didn't. He asked it in a nice way. Oh, oh really? It was, it was a little bit challenging, but not like, you know, he right. just he was curious. And uh, what are you <laughs> doing for the damn pygmies? <laughs> Harry Krishna movement. <laughs> but but, you know, because Nishring Ananda Prabhu was speaking in the booth before me. Oh, really? And uh, Giriraj Swami came in after me. Who? Giriraj Swami. I missed Giriraj Swami yesterday. Yep. Man. But, you know, just connecting you know, with them on my way in and my way out of that service was special. And, and in so many ways, bumping into so many people that were... Uh, you know, we, I just saw that kind of culture, that kind of respect. Here's Prahlad. He's the king. And he's talking to a person that's just lying in the dirt, apparently doing nothing. Mm. It's kind of like polar opposites from a material perspective. Yeah, like a, a like a destitute person on the street and a king. And yeah, they're both and, pure and, devotees. 
Yeah, and, and you would think, if anything, it would be the other way, that the destitute person would be bowing down and showing respect to the king. But the king is saying he's bowing down to him. He, it says he worshipped him. I don't know exactly what that looked like, you know. And then he asks his permission. With your permission, may I now move on to, to my duties in life? Yes, you know, go ahead. <laughs> it's like he want all, and all of that is kind of like... um. It just like you know, you're you're a part time botanist, Ragana. Part time, right? okay. Sure. And so, but your knowledge is complete. <laughs> you know, <Okay. laughs> you only practice part time. <laughs> that would be fair to say. Yeah, it's, it's reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So just like when you pl you know plant a plant into the ground, you know, there's certain considerations to make it work right. You know, mm -hmm. for it to take root and grow. Right? Soil, Soil, sun or shade. Yeah. Fertilization. I think even like you don't like repot your plants like during the winter. Is that correct? You, you like times of day, times of day, no, times of day, winter, times of the year. Well, you know, in the after they, it's yeah. <laughs> his part-time knowledge is <laughs> he ran out. That was the end of his botany <laughs> expertise. <laughs> I know my wife would wait to spring to to repot the plants. I think she said. You pot them in the when it gets when it gets cold out, November or spring. Okay, so in any to life when in it's any, when they're dormant. In any case, a seed is planted, and then there are careful considerations about the conditions that will allow it to grow. Yeah, we talked about this. You know, we have we have some good stuff to post from the past weekend uh on, on the circle platform that will that will be on our, you know on our subscribers platform that we'll get to uh in the coming days but one thing we're talking about is like in one sense bhakti is such a simple process because you just connect with like say the holy name which is just this powerful source of energy or the bhagavatam which is a power these are these are like electric currents of spiritual energy when the mind becomes absorbed in them it just transforms the mind but in order for it to be effective, it requires the right conceptions, you know, favorable conceptions, a favorable sentiments, and a favorable lifestyle. And what Prahlad is demonstrating here is like the, the favorable sentiments, right? For what he just shared knowledge with me. And if I were just say like, thanks and walk off, that knowledge isn't going to be planted in the heart and mind and grow. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it'll grow with the right sentiments. Mm -hmm. if, if, and so therefore, he's just so respectful with how he deals with this, with this person, even though other people might be looking at him like, what the hell is this our king? Is he's king? like, he's bowing down to this guy. Like, like he doesn't care for that public opinion. He's recognized the spiritual truth is coming through this. That is guru really, right? There's a principle of guru. It doesn't matter who it's coming through. It's the same principle. It can work through different people. He's recognizing it's working through this guy lying on the ground. I'm going to show him the due respect, and I'm going to request his permission to move on, even though I'm the king. You know, that's the what favorable is, sentiments that allow that knowledge that he shared to grow, hmm. take root in him. Here's here's one I like. What other people think of me is none of my business. Hmm. What's my business is my business. Nice. What I think of myself, that's my business. Okay. What I think of myself. Miss Mary, you got some takeaways for us? Something we can bring with us in the course of the day when things are getting stressed out or even when things, or just when we want some mantras to run through our mind. Give us a little uh, takeaway goodie. <laughs> I got some goodies for you. Dance with abandon for Lord Jagannath. Mm -hmm. Dance with Krishna, but let him lead. Oh, you like that? Even when he, he dips you, huh? even, when he, even when he does the dip. Yeah, when he lets you just let let dance with Krishna, but let him lead. Isn't that okay. a great saying? Nice, very good. Nice. <laughs> the bad can be a launch pad for self realization. The bad? Yeah. yeah there's been a lot of uh, gymnastic stuff going around lately, right? Because the yeah. Olympics, they run and then they jump off that thing, boing, and <laughs> yeah, springboard. The dark seasons of life are a gift for growth. Yeah. Gift for growth. Hey, we're a gift for growth from Boston. That sounds like a, a emo a, band. Yeah. There's no bad karma for a devotee, just accelerated karma. No, accelerated pure devotional service. <laughs> okay. Get that straight. 
That doesn't fit on a t-shirt, but that's the statement. It's from Bhagavatam. Okay. You become what you meditate on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yum, yum, bapi, smarum, bum. Don't be a forgetful bird. <laughs> don't, yeah. Don't be a dirty bird. Don't be a dirty bird. <laughs> big. Be, be more like Big Bird. Surrender to the Big Bird. Surrender to the Supreme mm-hmm. Big Bird. Let go of care for public opinion and be free. Free. Oh, be relief, right? Freedom, 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 freedom. Freedom in a state like Maine or Virginia. Gratitude <laughs> and proper sentiment is fertilizer for bhakti. Okay, nice. The bhakti mm-hmm. fertilizer. And... And what about what the pig about meats? Pig meats? What about <laughs> the pygmies? What about the pygmies? Thanks everybody for joining us. I want to really thank all the supporting members. Uh, we got a beautiful community here, and the, the, the family of uh, devotees that are contributing to us uh, to keep this going with a monthly pledge. We really appreciate it. It's community supported, so you can go to wisdomofthesages.com, give whatever you want. Give whatever you want for monthly support, whatever you can, and we appreciate it because it helps keep this boat floating. Looking forward to India with Mika Suba and Mara, and that is happening in October. October 17th. October 17th to 31st. Hey, you know what we got to do, Raghunath? What up? One last big shout out to Linda, Linda, Linda. She, she oh, was Linda, Linda, doing Linda. everything for us this weekend, you know, facilitating really? everything from Behind beginning to end. Scenes. Yeah. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude right now. <laughs> and she's about to drive the stupid to the airport. All right. Yeah, we're going to split right now. All right. I'm going to, what do you call it? I'm going to give a shout out to McKinley Kishore and Claire, who've been oh, really, yeah, they're really great. sweet to us all, all week. We're heading back there today. They got Tarun this morning. They're having a kid party. They got a video. They're fighting Darth Vader with lightsabers yesterday in Hollywood. It looked like fun. Uh, anyway, thanks for all the people that are joining on Zoom at the last minute uh, because we're always changing the times. Our next show is tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern time. 9 a.m. Eastern time. Let's see, we're going to let you go to the airport. We're going right. on a hike right now. We're going on a hike in the mountains. Look at you. Yeah. Good morning, early morning hike here. Make sure you're hydrated. You know what? We are. Okay. We're getting super hydrated. That's why I got this. Bottle of goody water, right? Look at that. <laughs> All right, Mary, you need to like you need a little rest. I can tell that too, man. Make sure don't hike too hard. Let the magic continue to flow, people. Howdy bowl.